A good morning and also good afternoon to some of you today. My name is Anh Vu and on behalf of SET Education, I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today on our webinar. Um, so our web webinar will cover information about entry requirements and application timeline for the medicine program. The first step you have to take to become a doctor of medicine. Uh, please welcome Mr. Colin Chalmers, Director of Service for MedView, Australasia leading medical school admissions support company. He will provide us the information of all test requirements for the medicine program. Hello, Colin. And also it's our honor to- Hello, nice to meet you all. To have Mr. Tony Town from uh, University of Queensland one of the top university in Australia to further discuss about the entry requirement of medical course at UQ. Hello, Tony. Hello, everyone. Good to be here today. To begin the webinar, Mr. Callum will present about the requirements for the medicine program and all tests related. Callum, are you ready? Yes, everything is okay. Perfect. Okay, let's get started. So really exciting topic to be talking about today, getting into medicine in Australia. Um, so the three things we're going to cover today, so why you should study medicine in Australia, this is your home country, uh, the pathways to medicine in Australia, and then I'll talk a little bit more about our company and what we can do and how we can help you get into medicine. So first of all, a little bit about myself. So I'm actually based in New Zealand. Um, I got a master's in biomedical science here at the University of Auckland, which is our number one university. Um, but I've been working at Medview for three years now and have helped over 400 students on their journey to medical school. So I actually scored an ATAR of 99.95 uh, and I have a score of 90, uh, 76 on the GANSET, which equates to the 98th percentile. So we'll be talking a little bit about that exam later on, uh, but that's essentially one of the exams that you can use to get into medical school. Uh, so I do know what I'm talking about. Um, cool. So let's dive right in by talking about why you should study in Australia. So reasons to study medicine in Australia. So first of all, the universities are higher ranked. So outside of the US and the UK, Australia essentially has the world's highest ranked universities in the medical field. And I've got the rankings on a future slide so we can see the numbers uh, and see what the rankings of those universities are. Um, getting overseas experience is really good to go outside your home country and learn about other cultures um, because that helps broaden your perspective and makes you a better doctor. Um, access to the world's best hospitals and medical research programs. A lot of universities uh, in Australia have some of the world's leading hospitals. Actually, the world's most expensive hospital uh, is in Adelaide University. Um, so you're, you're going to be studying in a country that's a world leader uh, in hospital care and, it's, and medical research as well. And then there's the networking opportunities. So you're going to meet future doctors, uh, again, who are part of these world leading programs and will be able to share their experience with you. So in terms of the world rankings, here are the world rankings. So you can see University of Melbourne is 16th in the world. Uh, University of Sydney is 17th in the world. Monash University, 31st in the world. University of New South Wales, 46th in the world. University of Queensland, 48th, and then four other universities um, within the top 150. Awesome, so now we will talk more about the pathways to getting into medical school. So in Australia, there's three key pathways. So the first one uh, is direct entry. So for direct entry, you get into medical school straight out of high school, you start studying medicine. Um, now for some programs, the first couple of years is non-clinical, so you study just biomedical science um, before progressing to your clinical placement. I think usually most of them start clinical after the first year of these programs, and those last after either five or six years uh, before you graduate. And then once you graduate, uh, you start applying for internships in Australia, and normally you work as an intern for at least two years, if not more. Uh, before you join the specialty training programs like the GP training program or the neurosurgeon training program, which is when you specialize to become a proper doctor in, in a certain specific field. So you would spend at least two years still interning around before you become a fully qualified doctor. The next pathway is the guaranteed pathway. So for this one, you don't go straight into medicine. You complete an undergraduate degree first. So that takes three years long, and it can be Bachelor of Science, um, Bachelor of Arts, 
uh, Bachelor of Biomedical Science. It depends on what university you're getting in. Each one has different requirements. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit later on for what that degree has to be. But essentially, at the end of the degree, as long as you pass the degree and get a credit average, which is like a pretty average average, um, you progress to postgraduate medicine. So there's no competitive set in between here. As long as you pass, uh, you progress to postgraduate medicine. The competitive step is getting into this guaranteed entry program, and then you're guaranteed entry into medicine once you complete your undergraduate degree. And so UQ, who you're going to be hearing about later on, uh, is one school that offers this guaranteed entry program. And then if you're unsuccessful at getting into medicine through either this direct or guaranteed pathway, you can go through what's called the postgraduate pathway. So in the postgraduate pathway, just like the guaranteed pathway, you complete an undergraduate degree first, but the difference is that there is a competitive step between the undergraduate, undergraduate degree and postgraduate medicine. So you're not guaranteed entry, you have to apply and you will be accepted if your marks are good enough. Whereas for this one, you're guaranteed entry. Uh, you, you're you not judged on your marks or anything as long as you pass this degree. Cool. So these are the universities that offer direct and guaranteed entry. So the ones that you can apply to straight out of high school. So for direct entry, you've got all these ones. So Monash, uh, which is five years, James Cook, six years, Tasmania, five years, UNSW, six years, Western Sydney, five, Adelaide, six, Flinders, six, Newcastle, five. Uh, and then for the guaranteed entry programs, you've got four options. So you've got University of Western Australia, Sydney University, Griffith University, and the University of Queensland, which you're going to be hearing from later on. So how are you judged in terms of getting into these programs? So there are four different kinds of requirements that you can have. So the first one is grades. The next one is standardized tests, of which there are two that are commonly used. So one is called the UCAP and one is called the ISAP. There's an interview and then there's uh, English language requirements. So not necessarily all these things apply to every different university, but most universities will use a combination of these. So if you're sitting you're, uh, in Australia and you're doing the ATAR examinations, a competitive ATAR is 95 or above. It depends what university you're applying to. Some universities will require higher, but this is the minimum ATAR that you need to get into some of the medical programs. It just depends on their requirements, which we'll go into detail a little bit later on. Uh, if you're sitting IB or A level, this is the IB or A level scores split by university. So you can see it's between BBB, that's the lowest for University of Adelaide, and then A star, A star, A star for University of Sydney, uh, which is the highest. And for IB, it's between a 33 and a 45. So regardless kind of of what scores you're scoring between 33 and 45, you're going to meet that minimum requirements for a certain program. And that's pretty much the same for ATAR as well. As long as you're scoring above a 95, you're going to meet the minimum requirements for some sort of program. Um, it's just about meeting the other requirements as well, so you can secure a place in that program. And if you are wanting to go to, to, go to one of those higher ranked universities, like the University of Sydney or Monash, you're going to have to score higher grades than if you wanted to go to an Adelaide University, for example. In terms of subject requirements, these are the subject requirements for um, international students. So Monash, Chemistry uh, or English, UWA has none, Tasmania, Chemistry, Queensland, English, so that's UQ, Sydney, Math, Adelaide, Biochem or Math. Uh, Flinders, none, James Cook, English, Maths and Chemistry, Griffith, English, uh, Western Sydney, none, and UNSW, none. So you can see as long as you're doing Chemistry, English, and Maths, uh, you are meeting all the subject requirements. So that's the easiest way to meet them all. Um, often universities will let you replace English with uh, TOEFL or IELTS if you aren't taking it at school, but most Australian schools will require you to take English anyway. Um, so just keep that in mind, yeah you can usually replace it with TOEFL or IELTS if you are um, not sitting there. Cool. In terms of the standardized test requirements, these are the standardized tests. Um, so we talked about ISAT. It stands for International Student Admissions Test. Um, and so these are the universities which use it. So Monash, UNSW, Western Sydney, Queensland, Western Australia, and Tasmania. Um, so there's also UCAT. 
So Adelaide University only accepts UCAT, and then you'll see UNSW and Queensland are here, but they're also here. So they're both now considering not only ISAT, but also UCAT. Uh, so you can sit either or for these universities. Um, most students, I think, will sit both just to keep their options open, because obviously Adelaide has that really low academic requirement. So for students who uh, don't have the strongest grades, they'll sit UCAT so that they can get into Adelaide. Um, and then they can use that score to apply to UNSW in Queensland, uh, as well as sitting ISAT in case they get a higher score, they can submit that or, or apply to one of these different universities. And then there are five universities that require no standardized tests. So for these, entry will purely be based on grades and interview or just grades um, for these five universities. So Sydney, Griffith, James Cook, Flinders and Newcastle. So what is ISAT? So ISAT is a three hour multi-choice test. Uh, so it's normally set at a test centre. At the moment, they are making it all uh, remotely set from home due to COVID. I'm not sure when that will end, but for the rest of the year, it's all remote from home. So the test itself has 100 questions that you do within the three hours. And these questions are set into uh, two sections called critical reasoning and quantitative reasoning. And I'll cover what those are in a second. Uh, but for each section, you get a score between 100 and 200. And then you get an average and overall score, which is the average of the two scores. Now for this exam, the results are valid for two years. So if you sit it in year 11, for example, you can use that score to apply in year 12. Um, but you have to wait 12 months before resetting. So if you sat it in year 11 and got a, a not such a good score, you would have to wait a full 12 months before resetting. So you've got to be careful when you sit the exam to make sure that if you want to reset it, you've got a full 12 months before the application deadline uh, to allow you to sit, sit that exam again in case you get a bad score. But you can sit it in year 11 for practice. And so a good score that's going to be super competitive uh, is a score of 180, which is equivalent to the 80th percentile. So in terms of the two sections for ISAT, these are what they are and what they cover. So critical reasoning involves comprehending and analyzing information, understanding, applying, and extending ideas, drawing appropriate conclusions, and evaluating arguments. These questions use material from humanities and social sciences. And I'll show you a practice question a little bit later on, on the next slide, actually. Uh, and then for quantitative reasoning, it involves analysis and application of information, drawing conclusions, making decisions, and solving problems. So you can see those descriptions are, are quite similar. Essentially, the major difference is that the stems for quantitative reasoning is going to be questions from maths and sciences. So graphs, they often involve calculations or tables, um, things like that, whereas these questions are more based on text passages um, or cartoons, which is the practice question that I need to give you. So the question is asking you to consider the follow, following cartoon, which has got five different panels. We go to work to earn the cash, to buy the food, to gain the strength, to go to work again. Um, so essentially, this cartoon is questioning the purpose of work, because why do we go to work when all we're going to work for is to go to work again? Um, so this is a, a fairly easy question, but you can see that uh, it's testing your knowledge of the interpretation of this cartoon. So it's not a celebration of work, it's not a neutral explanation of work, and it's just that work needs no justification. Well, that's just not true. So yeah, the correct answer is number two. Um, but for students who have English as a second language, it often can be quite hard to understand things like cartoons, for example, because it's not necessarily the literal interpretation. Uh, you've got to think about the context behind the cartoon, and that is an additional level of thinking, and that's why this exam is so challenging. Cool, so there are four cycles that you can sit the test per year. So these are the dates for 2021. Uh, they will be very similar for 2022, but the dates haven't actually been set yet. Uh, but you can see there's a cycle in January, May, August, and November. Now, applications close on a rolling basis throughout the year, depending on the university. Uh, if you wanna be eligible for all the programs uh, and you are sitting the ISAT in your year of application, you need to sit it in January or May to be eligible for all the programs because some of them close at the end of May, um, the applications, and you need to have set ISET before you apply. Uh, so if you're sitting it in these later cycles, you can still apply to some of the programs. It's just going to limit your options a bit more severely. So I would recommend if you want to sit in these cycles, you're sitting it in year 11. But again, that does not allow you to reset because obviously um, 
you would need to re-sit in one of these two sittings. So if you're going to sit it in uh, year 11, probably want to aim for January, and then you can maybe reset it in May of your year 12. Um, just depends on how much time you have. If you don't have enough time to do that, obviously you just need to study hard and you just get one shot to sit the exam and you can sit it in either two of these sittings. So students will probably prefer January uh, just because it's during the holidays, which gives them a lot of time to prepare, whereas May is during the middle of the school year um, and for students that gets quite busy, they don't have the time to prepare that they like and they've got you know other assignments and tests going on, so that's quite stressful. So the preferred sitting I say is January to my students. And then you have your result as well, you know how well you've done. In terms of the cutoffs, so each university, there are kind of different uh, cutoffs. So UQ and Western Sydney, there's no minimum score needed to apply. UNSW, you need to score above 150. Tasmania, you need to score above the 50th percentile, uh, which is about a score of 160, and UWA is above the 20th percentile. Um, yeah, sorry, uh, one, uh, the 50th percentile is about 170. UWA, the 20th percentile is a score of 160. And then Monash is 170, um, with a minimum of 165 in each section. So that's the highest cutoff of all of these. Cool, so now I'll also talk about the UCAT exam. So the UCAT is slightly different to the ISAT. So it is also a computer-based test, um, except you can't sit it before as a practice. You have to sit it in year 12 in July, and it's the first time that you sit it, and you don't get to have a practice. So it's two hours, so it's a shorter exam, but it has 233 questions, so much more questions. So a lot more of this exam is about time pressure uh, rather than like the super difficult questions like the ISAT. So these are the five different sections and we'll talk about what they are in a second. Um, but you can see the time per question in each section can go as low as 14 seconds, which is incredibly low. Uh, so you have to get through the questions quite quickly. So verbal reasoning is all about reading comprehension. So you get 11 passages with four questions each. So 44 questions in total. You have to read each passage, which is about 200 to 300 words, and then answer the four questions. So this section is all about speed reading. Um, so yeah, reading really fast and answering the questions. The next section is decision making. So it's all about logical reasoning and problem solving. Uh, and so I think it's easier to explain this section with a practice question. Uh, so here you can see all crows are black, all doves are white, this bird is either a dove or a crow, and then you have to say this bird is white, well no that's not true because it's either white or black, this bird is either white or a crow, yes that is true, uh, if not a crow this bird is a black dove, no that's not true because all doves are white, uh, this bird is either black or a dove, so yes, that is true. And this bird is neither white nor white. No, that's not true. So you can see these questions may be a little bit easier than I, I said. Um, they just, yeah, you need to get through them really, really quickly because the time per question is quite low. Cool, and there's the answers. Quantitative reasoning is all about your math. So just quite simple math problems, but they do tend to be quite wordy. So lots of words and that's somewhere that international students can also get tripped up if English is their second language. Sometimes they misinterpret the questions. Same issue with ISA as well for the math questions, misinterpreting the questions. But yeah, nine different scenarios with four questions each. So all math focused. Um, the next section is abstract reasoning, which is all about pictures. So again, I've got a practice question for you uh, to show you what the section is like. So what shape comes next in the sequence? So you can see there's a, a pattern here and then you have to choose which one comes next. So you can see this dot in the middle goes white, black, white, black. So the next dot will be white. This dot here moves clockwise each time uh, and it gets bigger. So this time it moves two, this time it moves four, this time it moves eight. And so for the next one, it moves 16, which actually puts it up here. So the correct answer is B. Um, so yeah, you, you have to work out the pattern from the individual elements. Um, that's this section. And then the final section is situational judgment. So in this section, they're gonna ask you, uh, they're gonna give you situations you might face as a doctor or medical student and ask you um, what you should do in that situation essentially. So what the right thing is to do uh, in each situation. 
Um, so yeah, those are the five sections of the UCAT. Um, so that exam, yeah, you sit in July. Now, the next requirement is interview. So there's lots of different kind of kinds of interviews. So if you're applying for these universities, they use what's called an MMI interview, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. Um, the most common format is a panel interview. University of Sydney does group interviews, so you're all in a conversation together rather than interviewing individually. And then these three universities have no interviews. So these universities are quite popular, uh, given that, yeah, that they have no interview requirements. Because I think international students also find the interview quite scary um, because it's all about spoken English and spoken communication, which is often um, sometimes their weak suit. Cool. So the interviews are very scenario based. Um, so they're going to give you a situation or some context and ask you questions about that. And what they're trying to test uh, is your motivation, your communication skills, your critical reasoning, your teamwork and collaboration skills, your empathy, and your understanding of the Australian health system. So oftentimes they'll ask you questions about like rural health, for example, because that's a really big issue in Australia, or Aboriginal um, health, because there are huge disparities between uh, the Aboriginal people and, and the rest of the population in terms of the health care they receive. So having an understanding of Australia and how the health system there works is really important. They tend to focus a lot more on your abilities rather than your accomplishments. So they're interested that you have all these skills, not necessarily what you've achieved in your life. So an example that I like to use is in terms of teamwork, they don't care if you are on your school's top soccer team or if you just play soccer in the backyard with your friends as long as you understand how to communicate and work as part of a team, that's what they're interested in. They're interested in you displaying the values and understanding them, but not necessarily having achieved at the highest level of those skills. And then, so the two major types of interviews, so a panel interview is kind of like a traditional interview. So there's you um, and maybe two or three interviewers uh, who will talk to you uh, just for 40 minutes straight uh, or something like that. Or for the MMI interview, it's kind of like speed dating. So you talk to one person for, say, five minutes, then you move on to the next person, talk about something different for five minutes, and then you keep going and keep going and keep going around. So talk to different people about different skills. So, yeah, that's all about the interview. And then in terms of the English language requirements, so for most of you, if you're studying in Australia, that allows you to meet the entry requirements because all they need you to do is have studied in a country where English is the first language. Um, and they need you to have done it for at least two years. So the majority of you would meet that requirement if you are studying in Australia. If you're studying overseas and you do IB or A levels, uh, as long as you're doing English, that allows you to meet the requirements for most universities as well. Um, but if you don't meet the requirement, you would need to sit IELTS or TOEFL. Um, so for IELTS, you're looking at needing to score above a seven with nothing, no one section below a 6.5. And for TOEFL, you need a score of above 96. Uh, with a good writing and nothing below, no, no sections below 20. So those are just the English language requirements uh, if you are studying outside Australia. Cool. In terms of the application deadlines, it changes throughout the year. Um, it also changes depending on whether you're studying in Australia or not. So these are actually the deadlines for people who study in Australia, because if you study in Australia, a lot of times you can apply through the same tertiary admission centre portal, so like QTAC, BTAC, those kind of things. Uh, so you can apply through those um, if you are studying in Australia. If you're studying overseas, you have to apply directly to the university and there are different closing dates, but it's really clear on their website. Um, so yeah, uh, often for the ones where there's um, rolling admissions, so for Flinders, for example, there aren't a set number of places. Um, so it just closes when everyone has so when all the places are filled up. Um, so for those ones, it's good to apply earlier. So you want to apply direct to the university rather than applying uh, through a tertiary admission center. But we give you advice on all this kind of stuff if you come onto one of our programs because it is very confusing the entire process and there's lots of different universities and different requirements. So we help by taking the stress out of all of that. In terms of how does the selection process work, you see. To be selected for interview, um, it's a combination often of your ISAT or ISAT and grades or UCAT and UCAT and grades. So James Cook is the anomaly. It has a written statement, so it's the only one where you have to do a written statement. But essentially, for your interview, you're going to be pre uh, 
selected based on either your standardized test scores or your grades. And if you don't have your final grades, they will use your predicted grades. And then the final weighting uh, is yeah, a combination of all these factors. So for some of them, it's just the interview. For some of them, it's your grades and interview. Uh, so lots of different things. Again, depends a lot on the university and it's very confusing. So based on your scores, we make you recommendations on where you should apply. Cool, so timeline wise, sit I sit in January or May of your year 12, uh, apply between May and November. The interviews are between June and November, so usually a month or so after the application deadline closes. And so normally you'll get accepted in January. It kind of depends um, what portals you're applying through and when your final results come out. But that's normally when you'll be accepted is when the universities get notified of your final results. And then class starts in mid-February of the following year. In terms of the fees, you're looking at about $80,000 Australian per year. Um, so in total, if you're studying for five or six years, that ends up at about 1.4 billion Vietnamese dong, um, or yeah, 80,000, so say between 400 and 500 Australian thousand Australian dollars. Um, it ends up being essentially the same for guaranteed entry because the undergraduate degree is slightly cheaper than medicine and the actual medicine part is shorter. So it ends up roughly about the same. And then living costs, uh, I put in 15 to 20K AUD, which is probably similar to what you're paying now if you are living in Australia. In terms of the number of places, these are the number of places available. Um, so in total, they add up to 400. And every year, there's a roughly about 2,000 international applicants. So therefore, you're looking at an acceptance rate of 20%, which is one in five, uh, which is actually not bad since domestically, it's probably like a little bit uh, more competitive than that, say one in six or one in seven. So the chances for international students are actually not too bad. Um, and obviously, there are some universities which accept more students than others. It just depends on where you're wanting to apply. Cool. So what happens if you don't get direct or guaranteed entry? I have to go very quickly and rush through this because I was only given 30 minutes to talk and there's so much information to cover. But essentially, you can apply for postgraduate medicine. So we talked about that earlier. So after your undergraduate degree, uh, you apply for postgraduate medicine. And so for that, you're considered on three major things. So the first one is your GAN set. So that's an additional exam you would have to sit, uh, as well as your GPA. So your grades from your undergraduate degree. Uh, and then again, the same kind of interview, you're gonna have to sit for postgraduate medicine. So for GAMSTAT, it's quite a different exam. So it has a written component. So you have to write two essays in 60 minutes, uh, which is hard even for people who have English as their first language, um, as well as you have to do 75 questions uh, of the general comprehension. So that's very similar to the ISAT style questions, as well as some scientific questions. So biology, chemistry, physics, um, and in total, the exam is about five and a half hours. So you really want to avoid doing this exam if possible. So five and a half hours with two essay writing sections. Uh, so very, very difficult exam. So that's why you want to really do well in your ISAT, do well in your grades and aim to get in uh, directly out of high school. So in terms of the timeline, the game set can be set twice a year, so March or September. Um, you submit your applications roughly about May. Um, for international students, actually, the interviews are a little bit earlier than September, um, and then you, yeah, you'll find out towards the end of the year once your final GPAs are coming out whether you've been accepted or not. Cool. And now I'll just quickly talk for a couple of minutes about our company. So essentially, what we are is a medical school preparation company, so helping students meet these requirements. So if you're worried about not meeting the ATAR requirement, we can give you tutoring to help improve your ATAR score. Um, if you're worried about the standardized tests, we can help you work on the UCAT or ISAT as well as the interview. So we can help you with all the core three components of getting into medical school, uh, as well as offering you advice on what universities to apply for um, and, and how to prioritize all that in your applications. So we have lots of different team members that would make up your team. So academic advisors, admission specialists like myself who understand the process really well, doctors you can talk to, exam tutors for the ISAT, interview tutors, um, academic mentors for your, your ATAR studies, um, and then application mentors as well. So for our tutors, we only hire the top tutors, so more than the 95th percentile in whatever subject you're teaching. Um, and yeah, if you are interested 
um, talk to the SEP team and they'll be able to set you up with a consultation. Um, so they'll book it in with one of our academic advisors uh, who will chat to you more about the process and how we can support you individually into getting into medicine. Um, and so that brings me to the end of my presentation. That was exactly 30 minutes. Um, so I'll be hanging around for questions. So if you do have any questions, um, yeah, stay till the end and you can ask those. And I'll now hand back to the SEP team. Thank you, Colin, for the interesting talk. Uh, now, if there is any question, please type it in the chat box and uh, we will answer it in uh, 15 minutes. Now, let's welcome Mr. Tony Tong from UQ to introduce the Doctor of Medicine program at UQ. Hello, Tony. Hello. Thanks, Colin. And it was a very detailed um, entry requirement sessions. And um, I'm just going to go, go, go a bit quickly because I think he already covered a lot um during during his slides so all right for very quickly introduce myself my name is tony i i am the regional manager for recruitment for china and onshore um so if students um you're currently studying high schools in australia and you are in brisbane feel free to come to your campus i'm happy to show you around um very quickly about our university um we are in the uh, east coast of australia um, so top 50 universities, as um, just mentioned, uh, our medical schools are ranked 48 in the whole world. Uh, overall, our QS ranking, we have 47 in the whole world. We have six faculties um, and there's 30 plus um, teaching research site and eight research institution. Um, just a very quick pictures of our, um, you know, this is the photos of medical schools in Hurston campus. It's about, you know, um, 15 minutes um, travels from our main campus. So as you can see, this numbers growing up is just trying to show you that um, the world population is getting older. So we, um, we really need, you know, it, we're facing the aging problems and the health issues that are coming in the next uh, you know, um, 30 years. So we will need more um, doctor and um, people who work in the health related areas. And of course, the COVID impact and the vaccine, um, vaccines really, really, uh, you know, speed up, you know, making the process being speed up. So we really, really need more um, people working in the health related area just to prevent, um, of course, one is the aging issue, the second is the prepare for the next pandemic. Um, studying medicine, of course, you know, it's all about people, you know, um, in the end. Um, so we do um, offer a lot of help in our regional areas and, and the local for healthcare systems. Um, talking about our doctor medicine programs, very quickly, um, it's, we have our guarantee entry, as just mentioned, our actual MD program is four years. There's only one intake every year in January. Um, they will be taught in our main campus, St. Lucia campus, and um, clinical schools um, in, in, in outside of Brisbane. Um, we do have our pre uh, year one and two for as a pre-clinical years with early patient content and research opportunities for the last two years. So that will have clinical placement uh, organized around the core medical disciplines. And uh, we have uh, over 15,000 of um, medical schools alumni around the whole world. For student support, we do have a lot of student support for our medicine program. So we do have medical students support team available in the campus. And also we have um, personal advice and networks as well as UQ Medical Student Society created just to support the new students who come into the medical um, studies because um, you will definitely need it because there's a lot of um, you know, new things you will meet while you're studying medicine degrees and it will be better challenging at a time. Um, of course, uh, it's more than a medical degree. So we do have a lot of uh, societies going on. Um, we do have a lot of activities going on. Um, yeah, once you join to um, the UK medical team, um, you will experience all the society that we have. There are so much things to do in the campus. So we do, we are actually one of the largest uh, medical schools in Australia. Uh, just showing you, we have a bit, we receive, uh, we have about 90 uh, students quota for students, uh, onshore international students, as well as offshore students. Um, that's the place we have for all the international students. 
Um, for domestic, we have 280. So yeah, as I said, we are the one of the largest medical schools in, in the country. So we do have a lot of places available, um, including in this domestic, uh, um, including this 280. Uh, if you are currently studying in year 12 in Australia, you will be including in this uh, part of quota as well, uh, including that 280. Then we do have a medical um, medical um, um, partnerships with uh, Oshners, UQ Oshners um, partners in in US. So we accept another ninety um, students from USA every year. Um, moving on, so international MD graduates, um, eighty from well, there, there's some data my colleagues prepared for me. So between twenty eighteen to 20, 21, uh, Eighty-six percent of students have obtained in an in internship in Australia, and fourteen percent of an internship resident, um, you know, elsewhere in outside of Australia. Um, the also, yeah, here are very quickly about employability. Um, sorry, employment destination. This is basically list down all the um, the um, the places uh, our graduates been working after their graduation. So in Brisbane, uh, so you can see then in Brisbane, so like all the Green Slope hospitals, Mata Health Safe Service, uh, PA Hospital, uh, Queen's Elizabeth Jubilee Hospitals. These are like one of the largest, the, these are the largest uh, hospitals in Brisbane area, uh, which they, all those medical schools, uh, medical um, facilities are working as or was part of uh, UQ, UQ facilities. And you, call, you can walk in the surrounding of um, you know, hospitals as well, as well as regional area. Um, of course, you can see, you can go to Canada and Singapore to um, walk in the hospital there because our degree is actually recognized there. So we've been working with a lot of um, uh, medical, medical facilities in overseas. Um, so they're happy to take in UQ graduates for internship after, after their graduation. Um, application process, we do have two options. One is for provisional entry. So this is for students who are currently uh, studying year 12 and graduating the end of this year. So this is the provisional entry for you. So what you will be um, taking is three year bachelor degrees plus and four year MD degrees or at UQ. Requirements 895 or if you're doing IB, uh, IP 37s. For so students in Vietnam, um, you will need to have a 9.0 out of 10 from your gifted high school. For English, um, for if you're studying Australia, easy. You just need to pass your year 12 English. Um, uh, we'll talk about um, more English requirements if you're overseas. So, and we will accept you can I, I set. Um, let me just move up some my things over there it's blocking me um yeah so you can take either ucat or iset uh, there are actually a um two um there are um ucat um ucat test centers in vietnam so uh, it's, in, it's in ho chi minh city um so if you wanted to take in ucat you can uh, sign up there uh, for iset we do actually have a, a minimum scores for international students so that's 160 in each section. Moving on, uh, if you if you didn't study English in Australia um, or US or um, Canada, then what you can do is by studying IELTS to meet our English requirements, IELTS academic seven across the board. Uh, if I've listed down to um, TOEFL and the Pearson uh, PTE requirements as well, uh, if you um, um, if you want to sit for the test and meeting the English requirement. Um, Colin already uh, mentioned about MMI, so a, a multi uh, mini interview. So I'm not going to talk in too much about it. So um, for anyone, students who meet academic requirements, they will be considered for MMI, multi -meet, uh, multiple mini interview. That will take part in consideration when we, um, uh, and when we let you know whether you're eligible for the program. Um, for the fees for batch for the first first three years really depends on the degrees you choose. So majority of us, um, most of the students choosing Bachelor of Health Science, this is a recommended program. 
or you can do Bachelor of uh, Biomedical Science. So the annual fee is between 38,000 Australian dollars um, to 40,000. For doctoral medicine, for the last four years, you're looking at around 82,944 um, Australian dollars per year um, for 2022 as a guideline. Yeah, so there are some deadlines. So for if you're studying Australia, um, so you need to apply through QTAC. Um, there is the QTAC number, um, but set if you don't worry too much about it, you can talk to the set representative, they will be able to help you. Uh, if you um, if you are currently studying in Australia, uh, you need to log your um, application through QTAC. Um, or any other if you're studying um, in Vietnam, of, um, then you need to apply directly to UQ by 8th of October. So this is the last last day that we will accept any um, applications for MD program. So provisional to so provisional entry when you progress to MD, there are actually requirement. Um, so firstly, there are two specific programs you need to do in what, during your first three years. One is BIOM2011, Integrative Cell and Tissue Biology. The other one is BIOM2012, uh, System Physiology. So these are the two, two um, prerequisite programs you need to do. For more information, you can always go and log on to our website. Um, the other entry requirements uh, um, for your progression is you need to meet the GPA requirement. Um, and of course, you need to, of course, you have to complete your degrees within the um, time limit. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you don't have to do GAMSET. I know some of the university, if you want, if you want to progress, uh, you need to do GAMSET again. But if you can get into UQ provisional entry, that you will have guarantee entries um, to the MD. Um, Okay, so these are the, um, if you don't meet the requirements for provisional entry, then don't worry about it. We do have our graduate entry that's as a second options. So what are the graduate entry? So graduate entry is that you, we have already listed down all the recommended bachelor degrees. If you finish any of this universe, uh, any of these degrees, um, then you can apply for graduate entry after your bachelor degree. Uh, the only difference is that um, instead of sitting for MCAT or ISAT, you need to do GAMSAT or MCAT. MCAT is uh, an, um, a another medical um, test um, available to uh, all the graduates um, in, you know, for who want to go to the medical schools. So for GAMSAT, we, for international students, we require uh, 15 in each section. Um, this has to be obtained within two years prior to the program commencement. Uh, for MCAT, um, the requirement is 504. So obtained within four years prior to the program's commencement. So um, you can choose, if you are in Vietnam, just choosing whichever one is more accessible to you. Uh, if you want to do that again, uh, sorry, um, the graduate entry. GPA requirements 5.0 out of seven. Um, this is the standard um, to go into the MD degree. Again, you need to complete two subject prerequisites, um, which is I just mentioned. Uh, you need to, well, if you're studying a bachelor degree in Vietnam, uh, you need to get your course outlines ready. Uh, just make sure that you, you, your course outlines showing that you probably have already done these two subjects. Otherwise you have to find a way uh, to enroll into this um, subject to meet the prerequisite. Um, English, same. Um, same as provisional entry, so you need to have IELTS seven. Um, if you're studying a, a you know a bachelor degree or master degree overseas, like in a speaking English speaking country, then we can waive your English requirement. Uh, of of course, you have to go through multiple mini interviews if you want to go to graduate entry. That's very it's the same as um, 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 provisional entry. Um, for fees, it's about, as I said, 82944 per year. There are some additional courses. Um, so, of course, if you, um, you need to prepare the fund or living expenses, you know, if your placement is not within with Brisbane or in, if you are in the regional area, um, this is something you need to prepare for yourself. 
uh, then every um, every three years you need to have a first aid certificate, including the CPR. So that's about 155 uh, Australian dollars um, for you. Um, graduate entry, there are multiple deadlines. So um, these are listed over here. So application deadline, we have a June application deadline, which is 14th of June, 2021. So which is tomorrow. Uh, the interview was starting from 13th or 15th of July. Uh, then we will issue the offer, the first round offer on the 2nd of August. So then moving on, our second round is starting from August. Uh, deadlines on the 16th of July, interview starting on 20th of August. Um, offer issue day will be on the 6th of September. September, um, application deadline on the 27th of August, um, interview on the 30th of September, offer issue days on the 18th of October. Then we have our uh, very last um, rounds, which is at the end of the year. So in October, uh, application deadline on 20th of October, interview on the 25th of November, and the offer will be issued on the 13th of December. If you meet that out, then you will have to wait for a year to apply for the next intake. All right, so that's pretty much it from me because I only have 50 minutes, so I rush out my slides. I uh, hope you can get all the information that you need, but feel free to ask any questions, okay? Uh, thank you, Tony, for the helpful information. So mm -hmm. um, I hope some student here will not have a chance to join UQ program next year or maybe uh, two more years. So um, there are some questions that um, I think uh, will need your advice. So is there the pathway for the doctor of psychology, Tony, for UQ? Is there any pathway for doctor of psychology? Um, so, so you want to be a psychologist? Is that is that what they mean? Sorry, I'm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, if you want to be a psychologist in Australia, um, so you need to de do a four-year psychology program um, in bachelor degrees, in undergraduate degrees. So four-year um, bachelor in psychological science honours. So it, ha it has to be doing a four years honours in psychology, then plus two years master in psychology. So six years of studies will make you a doctor of psychologist. So I hope that helps. Okay, thank you. The second question is, um, how about international student who has DDS in Vietnam? What is DDS? Excuse me? Uh, I think F.U. Surazi, um, what is DDS? Do you know what is DDS? Mm. Doctor of dentist. Oh, okay. So if a student have a D doctor of dentist in Vietnam, so okay. can, can um, if, we, yeah. So they want to be a dentist in Australia? Yes, I think so. Uh, I think you need to then, if you have a, a you know, a degree in, in a in your own country, then the first thing you should do is um, to study postgraduate to be a dentist in Australia. Um, at UQ, um, we actually don't have a, a dentistry degrees in postgraduate level. So we do have our undergraduate dental science program. So uh, unfortunately, if you're looking for a um, postgraduate level dentistry, and you are looking at other university. Um, we do have a doctor, um, clinical doctors um, um, in postgraduate levels, um, but there are some specific entry requirements. You have to be studying um, a dentistry in Australia, not in overseas. So I would assume that, um, I would suggest you to have a look at um, elsewhere if you want to be um, a registered dentist in Australia. You can study in postgraduate levels in some other university. I know some of the other, other universities do. Thank you. I have some questions in my private inbox for MedView. So um, can you suggest the cost of the MedView courses? 
type of courses and uh, when can they take all the courses at Medview? If the international student in Vietnam, can they study at Medview or they have to come to Australia to study? Yep, so the cost kind of depends on the student and how much support they need. So obviously we support for all the different aspects. And so if you need help for just one aspect, it can be fairly cheap. Um, if you need help for more than one aspect, then it starts to become more expensive. So our tutoring starts from $120 an hour and gets cheaper uh, the more hours you purchase. So if you wanted to buy 20 hours, that would be cheaper per hour than buying 10 hours, for example. Um, and so the tutoring can be delivered online. So students in Vietnam are yeah, welcome to do the ISAT tutoring or, or any form of tut like interview tutoring as well, if they do need that as well. So yeah. A question uh, for, I think, UQ. Could you please share about the uh, study program to become a dermatologist in Australia? It takes more than 10 years from studying Bachelor of Medical Science and Doctor of Medicine, right? Is it true, Tony, that it takes 10 years for the dermatologist? Yeah, I'm just trying, sorry, I'm just looking at the question. Can you please share this? Uh, yes, that's correct. So normally what you need to do, you need to study, um, but you need to study a bachelor, then finish the doctor of medicine, then uh, you need to practice in, I do believe in about at least two to five years, then you'd be becoming a uh, specialist uh, in, uh, um, in, in, your, in your area as chosen. So um, that's gonna be around 10 years, you are, you are not wrong. Okay, there's a uh, question. So um, a student gonna study year 11 and year 12 in America, in, U in the US, and um, is there any prerequisite subject for they to take? Um, and any other requirements for students in the US to study, to become a doctor, the direct entry program? Uh, okay, so if you want to get into, um, if you're studying year 11 and 12 in U US, uh, of course you need to firstly you need to pass your year 12 English, um, then depends on whether you're doing AP or SAT, um, you, of course you need to getting the max, it's you know, basically the maximum mark that you can achieve. Um, then, um, of course, other than that, it's very just simple for us. We don't have any prerequisites at um, provisional entry level. Um, so you, you basically just need, as I said, you just need to meet English requirement. You just need to meet um, SAT requirement. Um, then you need to, um, um, of course, sit for either ISET or UCAT. Um, then meet, try to meet the requirements. Once you meet uh, academic requirements, then we send you invitation for MMI. Uh, then you have to pass the interview. Uh, if you are successful, then you will be offered a place for um, the provisional entry to medicine degree. So there's no prerequisite uh, subject? Uh, no, not, 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 at, um, not at high school level. Um, I did mention about two subjects prerequisites but you study these two subjects while you're studying your bachelor degree. Okay, so let me take some time to translate it. Um, như vậy thì ở UQ khi mà các uh, bạn học uh, cấp 2, cấp 3, kể cả ở Mỹ, ở Việt Nam thì không có môn học uh, yêu cầu bắt buộc. Tuy nhiên là nếu các bạn đạt được đúng theo yêu cầu của trường thì và đi thi cái bài thi ISAT hoặc um, UCAT mà đạt được đủ cái yêu cầu của trường thì trường sẽ gửi thư mời cho các bạn vào vòng phỏng vấn và sau đó thì uh, khi mà pass qua vòng phỏng vấn thì bạn sẽ được nhận vào làm chương trình học cử nhân và sau đó là sẽ học lên um, Doctor of Medicine là trở thành bác sĩ uh, thì um, về cơ bản thì là như vậy ạ uh, ở Mỹ thì chắc là các bạn sẽ thi hoặc là IB hoặc là SAT đó uh, Another question um, So uh, for UQ, uh, okay, so 
this question is how to become a um, surgeon. And um, they don't find this major in the medical course at UQ. Do you provide the surgeon surgery? So um, sur clinical surgery um, is part of the MD degree. So uh, in MD, you will study to become a surgeon. So once you, um, once you finish a doctor of medicine, um, you can be practiced as a surgeon. But of course, you need to pass your first, um, you have to pass your placements first after your graduation. But it's, it is part of the degree. Uh, I mean, it's not normal surgeon, it's more the beauty surgeon. Oh, beauty, beauty surgeon. Uh, if it's plastic surgery, um, I think that is actually not a part of the doctor of medicine. Um, we are actually teach in, for doctor of medicine. It's more about clinical surgery. So, uh, what should uh, is there any cost to become? Um, I think you might be able to find some um, vocational studies. Um, terms of plastic surgery because um, this is more um, doctor medicine is more for you to become a, pro a doctor um, so it is not really because plastic surgery is more like um, cosmetic so um, it's not a very uh, it, it's not not really a clinical surgery process um, so um, I, I will suggest you to have a look at some vocational courses I'm sure there will be some diplomas around they can do. Okay, so um, uh, so for Colin, are there any age restriction and retake limits for ISAT? Uh, no, so it's just that restriction that you have to wait 12 months, so 12 full months before you can reset it. Um, yeah, that's the only restriction is you have to wait 12 months. Okay, thank you. Uh, could you please share the entry requirements for non-traditional medical student uh, people who already graduated from uni, had a job, but want to go back to uni and start studying for doctor degree? Okay, um, this is going back to my slides for the graduate entry. So graduate entry is for students who complete a bachelor degree or master degrees. Um, I think this is my la one of my last slides. So this is the graduate entry. Graduate entry is for students who already complete a bachelor or master degree. Um, you need to sit for GAMSAT or MCAT. Um, then meet, of course, we have to looking at your bachelor degrees, your, your grades for your bachelor or master degree. You need to, we will convert your um, qualification your grades to a seven point scale uh, UQ has. So you need to have a 5.0 out of seven. Again, uh, if it's for graduate entry, then you will, we were looking at um, the pre subject prerequisite. You need to have the integrative cell and tissue biology and system physiology. So um, these are the two subjects we're looking at. Uh, you must have, you, you have to do it uh, in at least has to show it somewhere in your um, undergraduate um, transcript or master degree transcript. Uh, if you haven't done that, uh, you can probably do some um, um, standalone subjects just to meet the prerequisite. Mm. Yeah, but it's definitely possible, yes. So in UQ, that's the, the parents still worry about the prerequisite subject in UQ, so um, for the Bachelor of Medical Science and Doctor of Medicine course, is mm. there any prerequisite like chemistry or maths, uh, anything? Uh, for year 12, no. I, I think Colin, can, can you share that, that slide again? I think I remember you have a slide for the prerequisite. Yeah, sure. prerequisite yeah, some, yeah. some other university may some be. University. Colin may be able to cover that. Hold on, just let me bring it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just find it on my yeah. yeah, it's it's on his slides. Uh, for UQ, it's just um in. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Vì, um, nãy trong bài thuyết trình thì bạn Calvin bạn cũng có chia sẻ một số những cái môn bắt buộc của một số trường 
thì hiện UQ là không có môn bắt buộc cho học sinh lớp 12 tuy nhiên sẽ có những trường khác có những môn bắt buộc như môn toán hay môn sinh thì chờ một chút để bạn là gửi lại cho chị cái thông tin này. Okay. Callum, can can you show me that slide so that I can translate it? Yeah. It's just loading. Sorry. Okay. Oh, there you go. Can you see it? Yes, I see it now. Um, so yeah, no, Cleveland no, is just English, but other ones require chemistry, chemistry here. This one is biochemistry or maths. Chị Tâm, chị có, chị có thấy màn hình chưa? À, đây là một số những cái môn yêu cầu ở một số trường khác. UQ thì chỉ yêu cầu về mặt tiếng Anh thôi, tức là IELTS 7 chấm, không môn B nào dưới 7 chấm. Uh, còn ví dụ như là nếu mà con muốn học tại Monash chẳng hạn thì sẽ yêu cầu môn là môn hóa, chemistry và tiếng Anh bao gồm cả hai môn hay là uh, đối với trường đại học SLA thì sẽ là môn sinh, môn hóa và môn toán đó thì mỗi một trường sẽ có một yêu cầu khác nhau thì UQ chỉ có yêu cầu về tiếng Anh và IELTS 7 chấm không bê nào dưới 7 thôi ạ so I'm waiting for more question Is there any more question for our guest because today? Well, there's still more, more, more students coming. Okay. Chị Tâm, chị Tâm cho em hỏi là chị, chị có hiểu chưa? À. Uh, okay, Tony, um, a student just uh, jumped into my chat box to ask about the pathway to become a doctor that major in heart. Um, in heart. So, um, yeah. so, um, so you will study everything. Let, let, sorry, um, let me just put. So let me just pull up what you will study in doctoral medicine, because basically you will learn everything about medical. Um, that will become you, you will become a general practice doctor if you're finishing doctoral medicine degrees, including um, um, including surgeries as well. Um, so there's once you complete this degree, that will be it. Uh, that will cover all the uh, medical um, aspects that you will need to study. Um, Yeah, you can translate it uh, while I'm finding the, the page so I can, I can talk to them. I think that after they uh, graduate as a general doctor, they're going to have the time to practice in the, the hospital to mm. every, every faculty. And that if they want to major in heart, they're going to have to practice them more and study more. About yes. That. So yeah. it's, by, it's, it's basically by... Um, Okay. Yes. So basically, it's but that it's basically you will prep keep you you will not practice in one place. We will move you around. Depends on um, the you know the the section you are studying at the moment. Um, so you will move into hearts. You will move into uh, lungs. Things like that. Different uh, different aspects of medicines. Um, just trying to. Find out if I can find information what you will actually study. So, but that definitely, um, hearts will be part of it. You will be studying that. Um, Nam có hiểu câu câu hỏi à, câu trả lời chưa nhỉ? À, Nam Phương, bạn bạn Nam Phương có hiểu cái câu trả lời chưa? Vì um, tức là em sẽ học tất cả các cái chuyên ngành khi mà em trở thành bác sĩ đa khoa đấy. Nên là um, sau khi tốt nghiệp xong, nếu mà em đi thực tập em có hứng thú và một cái bác sĩ chuyên ngành gì đó ấy, thì em sẽ thực tập thêm và học thêm về cái chuyên ngành đó ở bậc cao hơn. Uh, uh, chị Tâm uh, hỏi riêng từng trường về thời lượng hay yêu cầu chính xác của mỗi môn đạt mức điểm nào hay là chương trình nâng cao AP. Um, tại vì hôm nay thì hiện tại là chị có đại diện của trường đại học uh, Queensland 
nên um, cái này thì bọn em sẽ tư vấn riêng cho chị Tâm về điều kiện um, đầu vào của từng trường sau chị Tâm nhắc là tự cụ thể những trường khác thì sẽ yêu cầu chính xác của mỗi môn như thế nào và yêu cầu là môn advanced hay là môn uh, extension vân vân ạ. Uh, so we have a question from Winnie. Does MacView have cost to improve interview? If yes, what is the cost for that cost? So yes, we do. Uh, we have both in-person ones all across Australia, so in every major city, uh, as well as online ones that you could do if you're based in Vietnam. And so the course itself is a group course, and so that costs uh, 500 Australian dollars. Uh, but all students who go through SET get 5% discount, uh, so very lucky. Uh, we also do offer private one-on-one -on -one support, so if students want some more individualized advice, uh, they can buy that and so that's $120 an hour but again they get 5% discount for coming through set. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question come to my private inbox about the adjustment scheme at UQ. Uh, do you have adjustment scheme for ATA student? That's correct. Um, I think we are the only um, only um, medical schools accepting adjustment factors um, into consideration for entry um, to provisional entry. So uh, we accept up to five adjustment factors. Um, so you just, if you study the top mathematics, uh, systematic uh, mathematics, then you get uh, two bonus points. Um, if you study a language other than English, um, that's including external exam them as well. So for students um, who, of course, n your native language is Vietnamese, so I will suggest you to take the ex uh, external exam on Vietnamese, then you can get another two bonus point. Um, then the one extra bonus point is actually awarded to students study a UQ um, enhanced program. Um, it's a UQ, degree, a UQ subject, so not many students taking it. So generally speaking, um, most of the students will get up to four, add up to your bonus, uh, add up to your bonus scheme. Um, you can, the, basically how it works, it's more like if you're getting an ATAR 91, just for example, uh, you can get, if you're studying the two top maths and um, if you, you already done the Vietnamese, then you can get to uh, 95. So ATAR shouldn't be too much a problem. Uh, it's more like um, the I set and um, the UCAT you should be worrying about. Thank you. So uh, there's another question from Zawin Quack in my private inbox. Does Medview provide tutoring for only I set, UCAT and not for ZAM set? Yes, we do also offer tutoring for GAM set for postgraduate students. Okay. Uh, um, okay, so there's a question about the English requirement at UQ. Uh, can they uh, be waived if they have enough uh, high score, if they have high score in English at high school? Uh, depends on where you're doing your high school. So if it's in v Vietnam, then um, no, you have to sit for IELTS or TOEFL or PTE. Um, if you're studying your high school in Australia, then yes, you don't need to sit for English tests. I just um, type in the course list um, for our MD degree. That's answering the pro um, students' inquiries what you will be studying. Um, you can, it's in basically including all the clinical sites or, um, you know, digital health, rural, remote medicine, things like that. All the courses will be delivered during your four years of studies, including the surgery. Um, yeah, if students will be interested, um, that's the link. They, they can have a look at all the, all the subjects uh, throughout the four years, including the clinical um, practice. Oh, there's a question regarding the list. Uh, the recommended bachelor degree list doesn't include bachelor medical imaging and it is advantage if the student would like to apply for graduate entry after bachelor medical imaging. 
Tony? Um, we actually don't have a medical imaging program uh, for UQ. Um, so um, if you want to do the medical imaging, um, you might have to looking at some other institutions. I know some other, other institution do. Uh, we offer a more traditional uh, MD degrees, which is a medicine degree. Mm. Yeah, it's more traditional uh, general practice and the clinical surgery uh, degree. Um, so it's not a medical imaging degree. Okay, thank you. So, so uh, before that, you have a question about a psychologist and that student just inboxed me privately to, to ask it again. <laughs> Because um, um, just to, to remind that uh, psychology, you don't have to take the doctor of medicine course. You're going to study the psychology, the Bachelor of Science in Psychology or Arts in Psychology and take the master course and register to become a psychologist after the master course. So it's going to be a little bit quicker and cheaper than, than a doctor of medicine. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other question for our guest speakers? Um, if uh, you don't have any other questions, so uh, let me uh, thank both guest speakers today for coming and sharing all the information needed for international students to become a student, a doctor of medicine course. And um, if there are any questions that have been answered today, and you have any other question after the webinar, feel free to um, contact SET Education. We're gonna have to uh, answer it. And um, once again, thank you very much for your participation in this webinar. I hope all of you enjoy it. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Colin, for coming. And uh, oh, there's a note from our manager. Oh, as he said that um, student can get a discount if they register, make you cost to set education. Is that true, Carlin? Yeah, so 5% discount if they register through set. Okay, thank you. But em xin phép được nhắc lại một chút là set education À, hiện tại sẽ hỗ trợ học sinh đăng ký các khóa học ở tại Medview các khóa học luyện thi để trở thành một để có thể tăng khả năng cho các bạn để vào các cái khóa học trở thành bác sĩ tại Úc thì hiện tại nếu các phụ huynh có nhu cầu đăng ký cho con em mình các khóa học tại Medview về à, luyện thi ISAT, à, UCAT luyện phỏng vấn thì hoặc luyện à, thị à, để tăng điểm A tà thì khi đăng ký qua sẽ education sẽ được giảm 5 phần trăm cho tất cả các khóa học tại Medview và ngoài ra thì uh, sẽ education cũng là đại diện của rất nhiều trường đại học tại Úc uh, có khóa học để trở thành bác sĩ nên nếu bất kỳ phụ huynh học sinh ở đây còn có câu hỏi nào khác liên quan đến việc trở thành một sinh viên học bác sĩ tại Úc thì có thể uh, contact với sẽ education để bọn em uh, hỗ trợ ạ em rất là cảm ơn Uh, <cười> vâng, và bởi vì cái khóa học trở thành bác sĩ thì mỗi một trường tại Úc nó cũng sẽ có các chuyên ngành khác nhau Nên uh, nếu mà các uh, bạn có nhu cầu học các cái khóa khác ngoài các cái khóa mà um, bạn Tony ở bên UQ gửi Thì uh, có thể liên hệ với Seth để bọn em có thể tìm được một trường đại học phù hợp ạ Rất là cảm ơn các quý vị phụ huynh đã tham dự uh, Once again, thank very much for your participation and if you have any other question, please contact SET Education. Um, have a lovely weekend. And I hope that we all healthy during this guys. pandemic. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>